morning 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 how you guys doing today we got a bunch of news stories coming up we're gonna take a look and see what happened to egyptian with the pagans if you know he's the one the court went after for posting some stuff during uh the freddy trial everybody knows that one andrew glick so-called chef turning and stuff like that not good stuff not good stuff also we have some more information on that story where a pregnant lady hit a biker took off went to the house and ended up getting shot and killed a lot more information coming out on that one 911 call basically also we have a community that was helping out a motorcycle club good stuff right there don't forget to go over to roku and we now are on fire tv hell yeah man we're all over the damn place here we go Rock on, rock on. Don't forget to go listen to the second half of the show over on the podcast platform. Good stuff. We go for about, it's been averaging about an hour lately. So got, go on over there, grab that stuff. Here we go. Uh, out of Ed Hat, Santa Barbara. Sad state of affairs. Sad state of affairs. Motorcyclist identified in fatal DUI collision. They have identified the motorcyclist that died uh, November 27, 2021. Uh, fatal collision as a 70-year-old with Santa Barbara resident, Kenneth Warfield Sterling Sr., Around 1.55 p.m., the Santa Barbara Police Combined Communication Center received multiple reports of a serious injury traffic collision near the intersection of East Coast uh, Street and, um, man, that, uh, combined, why don't you guys just say 911? Anyway, <laughs> uh, the fire and all that responded officers get discovered an adult male unresponsive lane in the roadway a motor officer was first on the scene rendered aid and soon fire and paramedics uh, arrived a jeep an suv was driving behind the motorcyclist and rear-ended the motorcycle ultimately ejecting him approximately 85 feet before landing in the roadway the Jeep then collided with a parked Dodge Ram pickup truck. The motorcycle was struck with such force it careened what riderless half a city block before colliding with a parked Toyota sedan. Sad state of affairs. Those are the scariest ones, man. You look in your mirror and stuff, you, they don't ain't stopping. Get that out, man. Get that exit. Uh, they say the driver of the Jeep is to believe at fault. Raul Gonzalez, a 48-year-old Santa Barbara resident, is suspected of being DUI at the time of the collision and was placed under arrest. Remember, we did that story the other day where dude was given the middle finger. He kills the biker only get six years i'm really wondering what they're gonna do in this one there has to be something with a bait or mrf that we can start getting at the state and local level with getting punishment increased if you do this stuff to motorcyclists man it always seems like nothing ever happens that's the way it is now community jumps in to help after club's parade trailer was stolen beautiful stuff right here usually it's the club that helps the community now it's the community helping the club 
Let's see what, uh, yeah, here we go. Guthrie, the Territorial Riders Motorcycle Club, was preparing for the big Territorial Christmas Parade when their parade tra uh, trailer was stolen. On Friday, they said they're on a mission to give back the kids this year and every year. So they didn't let it, them, let it stop them when their trailer was taken. Quote, we do this every year from October to January 1st. We are hooked up for the community. This is what we live for, club secretary and treasurer uh, Skip Anderson said. And their annual Christmas dry uh, toy run began 16 years ago. Good stuff right there. Good stuff. Let's see what they have to say here. Of course, it ain't playing. Anyway, main story today. Main story. Where is John Egyptian Cockbalin now? And this is from Cinematic Holic. Of course, they would come out with something like this. Oh boy, do I got something coming up and final thoughts for you guys about what new something new we're going to be doing. Oh, they're going to love me even more now, these cops. Uh, motorcycle gangs are extremely popular when it comes to loyalty. Thus, some members of the Pagan Motorcycle Club were of the opinion that Andrew Chef Glick was in the wrong when he flipped on another member, Ferdinand Angelo. And on Jello or something. See, we see right there in Chicago, we call it Angelo. <laughs> Whatever. Although the evidence uh, Andrew collected helped in putting away Freddie, the former member had to face retaliation for his actions. Investigation Discovery's Doctor's Orders chronicles the gruesome murder of April Kaufman and shows how the Egyptian was the main man behind the smear campaign. Yeah, they put me in that one, too. I think it's episode three. Gotta love the media. Oh, man, are we going to be fighting back against that? Uh, they go on to uh, ask who the Egyptian was. Uh, he was a member of the Pagans Motorcycle Club. And again, these are news reports. It's their side of the story. Just remember that, especially something from like this uh, site. <laughs> uh, when Andrew became part of the Pagans, Freddie became his mentor and taught him the ropes. However, Andrew maintained that John was the only person he got close to apart from Freddie. John looked after Andrew during his early days in the crew and after the two developed a very close bond. Uh, the show goes on to mention, and has anybody even seen the doctor's orders on Discovery Plus? Just wondering, did they get my good side? I don't know. <laughs> the smear campaign. Oh my God, would you people. Anyway... They asked where he's now because he uh, did get thrown in jail for a little bit because he was convicted of witness tampering and sentenced uh, four years of uh, probation in 2019. He was also handed a suspended jail sentence of 364 days because he made a social media post. Dangerous stuff when you get onto that social media. Nobody believes me, but hey... There's incidences out there. Don't put nothing on social media, man, for these cops to find. Because I think that's the first damn thing they do is go through social media. So you don't read about the Egyptian on this uh, cinematic uh, holic or whatever kind of sh site it is. It basically goes into the players of that uh, Discovery Plus deal. Going to this right now. A lot more information has came up in center here. They released the 911 case, uh, tapes. Now, we had the police takedown of this on our previous segment, where it showed the cops taking them down like you see in this right here. Now, it's full-on media hype going on. A witness claims it was self-defense, but the woman had called 911 saying she was in fear. 
if you don't know the whole story, go to the link, you'll see the big story, but a lot of you guys heard of it. On one, and these are the 911 tapes. On one call made by a witness to the crash, the dispatcher asked, is the motorcycle down on the ground? Is he breathing and conscious? The witness replies, he's fine. The lady just took off and left. Another call captured the moment the fatal shots were fired. Your three men, you followed me, leave me alone. Morales can be heard screaming before eight gunshots cut her off. Then another one, she tried to pull a gun on me. A man can be heard on the, uh, per the Daytona Beach News journalist. One of the uh, witnesses on the scene then tells the 911 dispatcher, the lady is shot, the dude on the bike shot her, her he shot in self-defense. And there was other ones. Very weird stuff here and a lot of debate on this one if you ask me. Lots of debate. Especially, I don't understand why he followed her. Any of them followed her. But that'd be coming up in my final thoughts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's favorite part of the show. And in my final thoughts, you know what uh, we're talking about when I say we're working on something. Haynes City Police Officer charged with, guess what? Guess what? Sexual battery. Yes, sexual battery. Does that surprise any of us? This is all we've been hearing about. Haines City police officer was arrested after officials with the Orange County Sheriff's Office said he sexually assaulted a woman in an Orlando hotel room. Sheriff's officials said Jason Rafael Rodaldos, 38, was celebrating his birthday with friends before leaving to go back to the Hampton Inn on Universal Boulevard. The victim, according to reports, had a room to herself and went to bed around 2.30. She told officials she believed Rodas came into her room around 3, using a f uh, key a friend gave him after he volunteered to check on her. The report went on to state the victim woke up to him attempting to engage in a sex act with her, and she began to yell and plead for him to stop. The victim later saw medical attention at Orlando Health uh, Dr. P. Phillips Hospital where she reported the incident. And he's been a member of the Haines City Police Department since 2007, has an annual salary of 50 G's, has been charged with sexual battery on a physically helpless victim and burglary with assault or battery, and he was released on bond for 60 G's. Guess what that means? $6,000. That's what he gets out and walks on. Unreal. Okay, my final thoughts for this. That one deal with the biker following the lady kind of makes no sense whatsoever makes no sense whatsoever i get it okay you follow find out where she's at well then stick back man there was no reason in my opinion for it to go this far she was obviously scared of course, she's going to grab a gun, too, then, because you got all these people following you. And next thing you know, he pulls his. 
that I get, somebody pulls a gun, you pull yours. But it for it to go to that level, just wow. And we don't know the whole story if she didn't even know she hit the guy. So what if she didn't know? Hey, whoa, I hit somebody? I don't know, man. Pregnant lady, why follow her? And if you do, because they already had her plates and stuff. But if you're going to follow her, stay back, man. There's no use to doing something like that. Somebody loses their life. Thank God everybody who got on the motorcycle, uh, the guy who got hit on the motorcycle was good. But a pregnant lady did die. So there's going to be a lot of debate on this one. As far as what's coming up, I'm working on the police wall of shame, a standalone video each week, probably on a Friday. And we're going to deep dive in the some of this stuff. And why am I doing it? Well, the reason why I'm doing it is cops will use propaganda to go through the media, which in turn gets to the general public, which in turns makes everything bad for a biker. They're always going around calling them gangs and at sometimes worst, domestic terrorist. So we're going to deep dive into the statistics. We're going to deep dive into cases present and past. We're going to show people that cops don't need to be put on a golden pedestal. They got a job to do. We get it. But their job shouldn't be to target a specific population. And in this case, bikers, clubs, because it fills their coffers. And that's what it comes down to is money. Not to even mention the hypocrisy of some of these cops wearing patches at their busting clubs earlier on their shift. So that's going to be coming up. Let me know what you guys think. We're going to go over to the second part of the show. Address some concerns and stuff like that some people had. It's going to be a good one. See you guys over on the other side. To the extent that pending criminal matters are discussed on this website or YouTube channel, all such charges are merely accusations and all defendants are presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law.